I mean, the middle Mars I often th thought of as like, is this some escape escape hatch for rich people? But I, it, it won't be that at all. It's um, in anyone who for the early people that go to go to Mars, it'll be far more dangerous. I mean, really, it's, it it kind of reads like Shackleton's ad for Antarctic explorers. You know, it's like um, difficult, dangerous, good chance you'll die. <laughs> <laughs> excitement for those who survive <laughs> that kind of thing um, and uh, I think there's not many people who actually want to go in the beginning because all those things I said are true uh, but there'll be some who, who will for, for whom the excitement of the frontier and exploration exceeds the concern of danger um, and, uh, and and they will start off building the most elementary infrastructure just a base uh, to create propellant uh, uh, a power station, um, uh, glass domes in which to grow crops, um, all the, the sort of fundamentals um, without which we, you cannot survive. Um, and, and, then, and then really there's going to be an explosion of entrepreneurial opportunity because Mars will need everything from um, iron uh, foundries to Pizza joints to nightclubs. Definitely pizza joints. <laughs> I think Mars should really have great bars. <laughs> um, the Mars bar. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Look, I'm a, I love dad jokes. <laughs> I'm a dad. Um, what, do you, what do you think the timeline for this is? So I, I, I'm feeling pretty optimistic about the timeline, although. Um, I'm, I can be a little, sometimes my timelines are a little, you know, um, people have told me <laughs> that um, my timelines historically have been uh, optimistic, and so I'm trying to recalibrate to some degree here. Um, but I can tell you what, what, what I know currently is the case is that we're, we are building the first uh, ship, the first Mars um, or, inter or interplanetary ship um, right now. And I think we'll be able, be able to do short flights, short sort of up and down flights, um, probably sometime in the first half of next year. And this is, this is a very big um, booster in ship. The liftoff thrust of this would be about twice that of a Saturn V. So it's, uh, it's capable of doing um, 150 metric tons to, to orbit in, and be fully reusable. Um, so the, the uh, expendable payload is uh, around, around double that number. So um, what it'll, what, what's amazing about this ship, assuming we can make um, full, and, full and rapid reusability work, is that we can reduce the cost, marginal cost per flight dramatically um, by orders of magnitude compared to where it is today. Um, th this, this, this question of reusability is so fundamental to rocketry, it is the it is the fundamental fundamental breakthrough that's needed. If you consider aircraft, for example, the uh, you can uh, lease a 747 and do a return flight uh, from Cal full of cargo from uh, California to Australia uh, for half a million dollars. That's what it costs to lease a 747 fully uh, round trip to Australia, which is far. Um, uh, to buy a single-engine turboprop plane, a good one, would, would, uh, would be about one and a half million dollars. And that can't even reach Australia, and it's, and it's tiny compared to a 747. So what that means is like a, 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 it costs less to, um, to, take a, to, to use a giant plane with huge cargo for a long trip. Than it, than it, that, that costs way less than buying a small plane for a short trip in the aircraft world. And the same actually is true of rocketry. The, 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 um, a BFR flight will actually cost less uh, than, than our Falcon 1 flight did back in the day. Um, so that was about a five or six million dollar marginal cost per flight. We were confident that BFR will be less than that. Um, so that, that, that's profound. Um, and that is what will enable the creation of a, uh, a permanent base on the moon and a city on Mars. Um, and that's the equivalent of like the Union Pacific Railroad um, or, or having 
uh, ships that can cross, cross the oceans. Um, until you can get there, there's no way for all of the entrepreneurial energy to, um, to you, can't, you can't do anything. There's no way for all the flowers to bloom. Um, once you can get there, the opportunity is, is immense. Um, and um, so we're going to do our best to get you there and then make sure that there's a, an environment in which um, uh, entrepreneurs can, can flourish. Um, and, um, and, and then I think it'll be, it'll be amazing.